Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here, and today I am super excited to share with you a kitchen conundrums that you have written in about, and that is alternatives to meat-based stocks. Now today I'm gonna share with you a how-to in dashi making, which is a Japanese stock that I know you will come to love and use in a variety of recipes. Now, you really only need two ingredients to make dashi at home. The first is Kombu. Now kombu, this is a small piece of it here, is actually sea kelp, which is a type of seaweed. And they come in various sizes, depending on the package and where you buy them. They can be really big or they could be small, they could be folded up, but really what you're looking for is a quality piece of kombu. And don't be fearful if you do see this chalkiness on the outside. This is actually a type of salt that is naturally occurring in the kelp. Uh, and you don't want to wipe this off too, too much because this is where the flavor comes from in the dashi. All you want to do is briefly clean the kombu with just a damp piece of either paper towel or a clean kitchen sponge that you don't use for dishes. And so you don't want to run the kombu underwater because that's going to take away some of the flavor but you don't really want to remove the white stuff. Now, this six inch piece that I have here is going into six cups of cold water. And I'm going to start to bring this up to a simmer. Now you want to be careful here, guys. You don't want to boil this. One of the things that is really specific about dashi, even though it's only two ingredients and actually really quick to make, is you want to be mindful of the temperatures. You don't want to boil any of the items that we're gonna be using here today. You really just wanna bring it to a bare simmer. So kombu's in, I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer and then I'm going to remove it before I add my second ingredient, which is right here. And this is bonito flakes. Now, bonito is a type of fish, actually. It's a relative of the tuna, and it's an oily fish. And what happens is the fish is prepared in a way where it is boiled first, then it is smoked, so it has a smoky aroma. It is then sun-dried and flaked into these really fine, papery flakes. Um, and bonito is really fantastic. It's used a lot in um, a lot of Japanese dishes. Sometimes it's added on top of dishes um, as a garnish and an added flavor. But what it really does here to the dashi stock is it adds this wonderful depth of flavor, this richness, this smokiness that really does kind of place dashi stock in a really great category with beef stock or um, a really dark chicken stock. It has this richness, this really developed flavor from this ingredient in particular that is really fantastic in soups, stews, um, and in a lot of other things. Now, dashi, it's commonly used in Japanese cuisine for dipping sauces, um, in noodle dishes, and most popular, I would say, or most well-known here in the West would be miso soup. And I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple miso soup in a few minutes once we make this dashi stock. So our water here is slowly coming up to a simmer. And once you see the first bubbles appearing around the side of the pan, you wanna remove the kelp. So we're just starting to get bubbles around the outside of the pan here, and I'm going to now turn this off. I'm gonna remove the kombu from the water. And you might be saying, uh, it doesn't look like much in there, there's not much color. Um, but there is a really great subtle flavor, a sweet flavor, almost like um, if you had dehydrated mushrooms, some of that wonderful umami flavor. Now to this, I'm going to add my bonito flakes. And again, this is two cups of bonito flakes that I'm just gonna add right to the top of the water here. And I'm gonna let this steep the bonito is going to sink down to the bottom of the pot, and that's going to take about three minutes. And then I'm done with my dashi stock. All I need to do is strain it, and I'm ready to make my miso soup. How easy is that? So it's been about three minutes. You can see the bonito flakes have kind of fallen down to the bottom of the pot. And this is it, you guys. Dashi is really simple to make. You just need those two ingredients, and you'll be able to make this any night of the week because it is so quick. Now, I'm going to strain this through a fine mesh sieve. And one of the things that I didn't really talk about was storing kombu and bonito flakes. You can keep them in your pantry in a resealable container and they will hold for quite a bit of time. So you don't have to really worry about them going bad. Um, so don't worry about making the investment in buying them at your supermarket. Okay, so there you go guys. Simple as that, the dashi is made. Now I'm going to take to make my miso soup, which if you haven't had miso soup at a Japanese restaurant, it's typically served 
kind of as you sit down. And it's really easy to make. You just need a few not really hard to find ingredients because they do have them at the supermarket these days, but a few unique ingredients. Now, I'm going to take a half a cup of dashi and I'm gonna put it into a small bowl here along with a quarter of a cup of white miso. And if you guys are curious about miso, we did a Kitchen Conundrum video on that, so check it out. There are different types of miso out there. There's white miso, there's red miso, there's even a type of miso that is a mixture of white and red. And what you need to do here is just whisk it into this half a cup of dashi. And what the miso does is it adds this wonderful sweetness. Again, it adds umami, that wonderful flavor. And it also gives a bit of a saltiness to, to the stock because miso paste here is made with fermented soybeans. So now I'm gonna take three and a half cups of my dashi broth and I'm gonna pour it back into the pot here and just get it nice and hot. You don't wanna boil this at all, you guys and have on hand some silken tofu and another type of seaweed, which is called wakame. And wakame is a relative of kelp. And what it is is a dried seaweed that's then crumbled or cut into small pieces. And all you really need to do is rehydrate it in some cold water. And this is what you get. Now this is typically ends up in miso soup here. You could also use it in some sort of seaweed salad as well. So my dashi broth is just coming up to a simmer here. I'm going to add in the miso. And the reason why you have to kind of take out a bit of the dashi broth and mix it with the miso is because miso will clump up. Um, so you really need to dissolve it. I'm gonna add in the wakame. And last but not least, I'm gonna add the silken tofu here. Now, again, you guys, you don't wanna boil this for a few different reasons. You don't wanna boil the miso because it's so great and nutrient rich and flavorful, and you really don't need to boil it. And also the silken tofu is so soft that bringing it to a boil, you might break it apart into pieces. And that was six ounces of silken tofu. So this is nice and hot. And I'm just gonna pour these into small little cups Now garnish the top of your miso soup with a little bit of finely sliced scallions. So there you go guys, a really easy miso soup made with that Japanese dashi stock. Now it's not just for miso soup, you can use it in stews, soups, noodle dishes, whatever. In place of meat-based stocks, there you go guys, a kitchen conundrum solved. Now as always, reach out to us using the hashtag kitchen conundrums, we'd love to hear from you and enjoy. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.